First, we're going to talk about static pressure. So let's say you have a nice little pool here. Uh, it's a nice warm day. You have your diving board right here, and you have your uh, you know, lounge chair right to the right, You're sitting down, relaxing, chilling, whatever. You're like, all right, uh, I think I want to go in the pool. So you climb up the ladder, jump off the diving board, jump through the water, and start sinking down deeper and deeper. And you're like, dang, my ears are starting to hurt more and more. Why is the heck is this happening? Well, here, let me show you. So let's say you have a body of fluid right here. Um, this can be anything you want, uh, gasoline, kerosene, water, whatever. Uh, so we're going to use the fundamental theorem of hydrostatics here, which is del P is equal to rho G, where uh, rho is the density of the fluid and G is the universal gravity constant. So now if we integrate both sides of this equation, we can get another equation that relates the change in pressure to the change in depth of the fluid. So delta P is equal to rho G delta Z. Um, so now we can draw a linear line um, to show the change in pressure linearly changes with um, the change in depth. So each of these lines represents pressure. And so as you can see here, the deeper you go, the more pressure there is, and that's why your ears hurt more. Dynamic pressure, designated by a curly P, applies to moving fluids. When a fluid is in motion, its kinetic energy is converted to pressure when the fluid flow is interrupted. Um, as you can see in this diagram, streamlines are used to designate the flowing fluid. One instrument that's used to show the differences and relation between dynamic and static pressure is that of a Pitot tube, which is similar to that of a stagnation tube. The equation that is used to relate dynamic and static pressure is that of Bernoulli's equation. This can be applied to different points along a streamline. The one-half rho u squared term represents the kinetic energy contribution of the fluid. The left-hand side of the equation will be used to designate a point early on in the streamline where it doesn't contact the Pitot tube. The right-hand side will focus on the point of contact between the Pitot tube. This is called the stagnation point. At this point, the fluid in the tube is no longer dynamic and completely static. I forgot a T, but you get the point. By canceling parts of the equation, you can find that the velocity is able to be calculated from the height that the fluid rises. The Venturi meter uses a converging section of the pipe in order to determine the flow rate of the fluid. By following one streamline in the strong Venturi meter, we can label point 1 as the point in the larger section of the pipe. Point 2 will be in the smaller section. By using the continuity equation, we know that point 2 has a larger velocity than that of point 1. What may not be obvious is that point 2 will have a lower pressure than point 1. This can be calculated using the Bernoulli's equation. Even if velocity is unknown, by placing pressure sensors on both ends of the pipe, the Venturi meter is able to determine the flow rate. Now for some examples of dynamic pressure. I've already started. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> As can be seen here, the pressure due to the velocity going through the paper causes the paper to collapse. And when there's no more velocity going through the paper, the paper expands again. Ta-da! Science.